YouTube, Leo Shang here, host of the Extreme Fully Fishing channel. Today is June 5th, 2019. It is going to be my outing number 88 of this year. And hear me out, guys, because today's video should be pretty fun. Now, as a subscriber or just as an angler, have you ever had that moment in your life that sometimes you're just at a tackle shop, browsing through some lures, right? Or maybe taking a look at things online and you just see that one lure that you have like absolutely zero faith that it's going to work. You know what I'm saying? I'm pretty sure that if you're an angler, you may have gone through something similar to that, right? And I mean, I've been fishing for a long, long time. I have seen some weird lures out there in the market, okay? I, I'm sure that you guys are familiar with this, but there is even a saying out there that some lures nowadays are made by the companies not even to catch fish, right? But to catch the anglers. So taking that in consideration, in this video, Extreme Fully Fishing is going to try to catch some fish on three very unusual lures, okay? At least three lures that I personally consider very weird. I have zero faith on these lures, and I really, I mean, I won't believe it until I catch a fish on it, okay? So the first one is the Tasmanian Devil. I have to give props to my Australian mates for this one right here because it is made in Australia. It is a seven grams lure with some kind of a rat or mouse having a, I don't even know, man. So it's like really weird. I don't know how this lure is supposed to work. Maybe spin like a propeller. The second lure that I'm going to be using for the day is called Trail Abate Fishing Lure. It is another oddity in the market. It is a micro lure that it has a treble hook that is almost as big as the lure. Not to mention that in front of the treble hook, there's a blade, all right? And um, the worst part, I don't know if this is good or not, the water is supposed to flow through this lure to give the action that it deserves, all right? So we will see about that. And then the third lure, the final one that I'm going to be using is actually a vintage lure created in the 1980s by the man company it's called the Shallow Diver. This lure is actually older than a lot of the folks who are watching this YouTube video. It was made back in the mid 80s, so it's about 35 years old or more. And you guys can see it, right? This is supposed to be a hard bait version of a night crawler, a worm. Even though we have so many soft plastics nowadays for worms, right? But uh, I guess this was an innovative idea back in the days, right? This lure was actually given to me by a gentleman in Yardley, Pennsylvania. So thank you very much. You know who you are. Thank you for the lure. I'm going to be fishing pretty hard for the next four hours, trying to catch some fish on the street, three lures. Will we be able to do it? Well, we stay tuned and we shall find out. Well, I guess I am going to get started with a trail, a bait fish lure very interesting <laughs> lure for sure i have never seen anything like this out there look at this like i said you know it's, it's got a huge leap a small body one little blade and one treble hook i'm gonna tie on on my ultralight here the water is supposed to pass through here through the back right and hopefully the action on the sting is going to be good huh Oh my goodness, wow, you got to be kidding me, a bluegill hit it. Dude, a bluegill nailed it. Like you really, really thought that it was a little shiner. I was just experimenting with it. I thought, you know, cast it right into the bluegill's nest, right? This bluegill is nesting. Look at the size of this bluegill right here. Holy cow. One of the biggest bluegill that I have ever seen around here. And you guys can see it, it's in the mouth. It is in, <laughs> it is in the mouth, bro. Okay, okay. Wow, folks, this is actually fascinating. I'm not gonna lie, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. This is one of those lures that is like, you know, you can't judge a book by its cover, right? As people tend to say outdoors, out there. 
even though it is as cliche as it sounds look at the size of this bluegill and you guys know with spawning bluegill they are very territorial but it's not towards every type of lure right they're actually pretty selective as to what they attack and they don't attack dude this was like second cast i put in that bed and let me show you a little something here i just want to show the action on this lure it sinks if you don't reel and look at the action of the little thing right as you reel it in man i would definitely buy another one of these to put in my stock better than a road runner you know the jig and uh, better than most little jerk baits that i found out there and look how generic this is interesting oh there we go oh yeah dang dude this bluegill are big well you know catching batting bluegill is a lot of fun and it does show that the lure works but i mean you know maybe we should catch something else right just to show everybody that this is not the only thing that this lure catches look at that look at the size wow dude looks like same size as the first one huh that is crazy dude i mean you know i never thought oh, i was actually on the bottom of the mouth look at that i never thought that the bluegill over here were like this big dude this is pretty jumbo you know this is a nice size all right let it spawn and let us go somewhere else try to catch some other species on these lures Okay, so over here along the edge. Maybe there's a fish over here waiting for something to pass. Oh my goodness, yes. Oh, I just missed something. I think it was a small pickerel. I'm not sure. I'm not even sure if I got that on camera, but okay, not bad, not bad. Well, we did catch some bluegill on that trail lure i think it is about time to retire the ultralight i know that those were like bedding bluegill but let me tell you after i have tested this little lure right here i am positive that this would work in other watersheds for other species okay you run a little something like this in a creek yeah you will catch some trout uh some smallmouth bass the micropterus dolomiel I'm gonna put my other reel on now and then we are going to try the Tasmanian Devil. I guess this is one of those lures that you just tie directly on the line. It says here feed the line through the body of the lure, then bead and tie to eye of hook. And then we got our Tasmanian Devil right here that looks like it is constipated or maybe in the middle of a colonoscopy. I don't know, man. But anyways, this is the final results of the lure. This is the Tasmanian Devil. And I guess this thing should spin like a propeller down there. Let's try to catch some fish on this stuff. Let's see how is this thing supposed to behave in the water? It's actually pretty heavy. Oh, what the? Woo! I did not expect this. This thing doesn't spin like a propeller. It actually behaves like a spoon. Wow, the motion of the stuff is actually very similar to the motion of a cast master. It kind of flutters from the left to the right. Okay, that's interesting. I am actually a little bit perplexed. The action on the viewer is pretty nice. It flutters like so nicely but I haven't gotten a single bite on it, on it yet. I mean, of course it could be that just there's no fish around this place because I am fishing a public body of water that is pretty highly pressured. So there's that. I just gotta keep walking and casting until something shows up and hopefully something is going to show up. I'm pretty sure that if I took this lure to like a creek with trout, this thing would actually slay the trout, man. I mean, man, this thing, this thing flutters good. I don't know what to say. This thing, this thing flutters like real good, man. Oh, there's one. Flutter, son, flutter. 
I felt that bite. Yeah, it's a bass. It's a bass. What is it? What type of bass is this? It is a, wait a moment, what? It's a smallie? Wow, we got a smallie on the flutter, man. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Look at that, huh? The Micropterus dolomiel. All right, now we're talking, man. Flutter, son. Very nice, very nice. We got ourselves here in New Jersey. Smalley on the Tasmanian Devil. Beautiful sample, too. I like that. Here, let me release this guy over here. Oh, yeah. Can't say that the thing doesn't work the way I saw it flutter around. I just knew it was just a matter of time. That's nice. Oh my goodness, did you see there the flutter, man? Oh, come back here, son. Did you, did you see that? Ah, uh, okay, maybe I'm getting a little bit too excited, but oh man, I missed that one. Boy, I should have let it flutter a little bit more, you know? I don't know what it was, a bass or a pickerel. Saw that uh, Tasmanian devil <laughs> around the area. And whoosh, man, just went right into it. But I think, I think that one's a goner. I think that one's a goner. That, that one may be a goner. Oh my, no, it's still there. It's still there. Oh, okay, 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 easy, Leo, easy, Leo. Tasmanian devil flutter, man. Just flutter, bro. Just flutter. Just flutter, dude. Just flutter. Still there, man. Whatever fish it is, still there. I said the hook didn't even fight. Thing was so small. Oh, I see, I see. We got here a sample of the Ezox Niger hooked on the side of the mouth. You guys can see. Little chin pickerel, yeah? Little juvenile chin pickerel. That's all right. I just missed his father over here. So I guess the son was kind of around. That's pretty neat. I guess one can say that this thing definitely works and the good thing about this lure too that I really like is that when you buy the package like the package that I got here you actually have a choice or I had a choice of using either a treble hook for the Tasmanian devil or a single hook right so I decided to use the treble hook but I could have gone for the single hook which is better for all species of fish out there right hey little buddy are you going to be okay I just want to make sure he's going to be fine. Yeah, I don't want to just throw it back there. Oh, oh, easy, easy, easy. Here, man, here, here, here. Easy, bro, easy. Oh, okay, okay. He's like, I don't need your help. You know, he's like, I'll go. Are you really going to go though? Oh, oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, he will, he will. He's just chilling over there now. Still kind of traumatized of the Asian folk. Two lures have caught fish today. We're down to a single lure. We caught fish on the Tasmanian devil, the little mouse here that is constipated. We got fish on the trailer bait. We only got one left. The vintage shallow diver by the man company. You guys can see here, right? Back here, yeah, there was a promotion that says here the offer expires uh, July 1st, 1984. This was bought back in the days at Woolworth, which is a store that doesn't exist anymore, for $2, and they call it the Hard Worm, and this one right here is a Shallow Diver. Holy cow, this is a vintage lure, so I'm a little bit, you know, well, all right, let's open it up. Dang, dude, vintage lure. This thing is like 40 years, this thing may be close to 40 years old, all right? Look at that. It's a hard bait, night crawler, painted lure with a little tail for some reason. Are we going to catch something on this in this video before the thunderstorm moves in? Hmm. <laughs> this is very 
questionable. Are fish really supposed to look at this thing and believe that this is just like a giant night crawler with a weird tail? But then again, you know, I used the other two lures earlier today. Oh yeah, it's a shallow diver, okay? I used the other two lures earlier today and they, they turned out to be fine, right? So you never know. We will see. Dude! What? First cast. Did you see that? First cast on the shallow diver. Something, something tried to take the shallow diver, dude. I don't know what it was. May still be here. Oh my god. Oh man, look at that, dude. Something's trying to take the shallow diver. Dude, uh, what? No, this is just, this is just, what? Is, is this for real, dude? Is, is this for real? Oh my goodness, dude. <sighs> bro, that was a full take, bro. Something's trying real hard to take the stuff here. That was a full take. that I lost this fish Whew. I had another one or two swipes on the shallow diver like right over here where I caught the little pickerel just now but I think the fish was just like too small it wasn't able to get it but you know I'm very fascinating fascinated that this fish are actually showing interest on the shallow diver I guess they look at it and for them it's just like a big jerkbait style lure so I'm gonna keep walking and hopefully we're going to catch something on this lure before the thunderstorm comes. I think I have one hour left for this challenge. You know, folks, the action on this lure is actually not bad at all. The tail may look a little bit weird, but the action in the water is actually pretty darn good, especially for a vintage lure. I'm working this canal and this canal is pretty shallow around the edges. So what I'm doing is I'm just doing the reel and stop, right? But like I said, I, I, think, I think we should be able to do it. This is actually very interesting. Oh no. Oh no, get out of there. Come on, man, we can do this. No, yes. Woo! Man, this is heart attack stuff, man. If this was any, just, just like any regular lure, you know, folks, it's like no big deal. You lose it, you lose it. This is a 1980s, like this is older, this, this lure is older than me. This is like vintage. I <laughs> Maybe I should play a little bit safer with it, you know? Oh boy, the wind is coming. It is 447. Thunderstorm is going to be here in about 40 minutes. I really want to continue this challenge. I do. But I just checked the weather, there's a thunderstorm coming up here real soon. I kind of feel the pressure dropping and the wind coming, you know what I'm saying? So it is about time for me to leave. I would like to emphasize in this video that although I didn't catch fish on all three lures, the three weird lures in this video, I think it was pretty evident that their action is actually okay. Actually better than okay, right? Their action are quite decent and they do catch some fish you know the clear message of this video is that you should never judge i guess you could say a lure by its looks right kind of an analogy to a book by its cover uh, a lot of people tend to say every lure has its when and where its time and place some other folks tend to say that the lures depend on the anglers who are using them right meaning that it depends on the angler's skill to catch fish and I agree with it. I think that it is really a combination of all of that. So the message is clear. When you go out there and you see some weird lures out there, yeah, sure, you should doubt it. You know, you should ask yourself, is this really going to catch some fish? But, but never look at a lure like that and just disregard it and never give it a try. This is the main message, right? You go out there, you take the lures, you try it yourself, and then you formulate an opinion as to if it is good or bad. For the three lures that I use in this video today, I am more than satisfied with all three of them. In particular, this one, the vintage one, which is the man's uh, shallow diver, right? 
I had read reviews previously on the internet of people saying that this was like one of the major disasters or disastrous lures that the main company made, right? Meaning that it's like super bad. You know what? I cast it out there. You guys saw it in this video. A fish, the same fish went for it like five, six times. Like it was like its favorite dessert or something, right? And the action is like real good. So, you know, at the end of the day, this is like all subjective, right? Thank you very much for watching this video. I appreciate it. I will see you guys next time. Tie lines and take it easy. Wow, that's intense. Did we get another hit here? Or, oh man, we got another hit on the ultralight. Dude, I don't even have time to set up my other rod. Ooh, ooh, not bad. Not bad, not bad, folks. Not bad. I think. This